Uh, yay. We made it. How's everyone doing? Hope you had a good week. Just adjusting my audio. I think that's good. 11 seconds late. On your watch. Hi, Titan. How are you doing? Welcome in, Kimmers, and thank you very much, Kimmers. While wow, we had a start and soon screen on still. Tier 2, 36. Wait, yeah, 36 months in a row. That's three years. Three years, Tier 2 resub. Thank you for being here, Kimmers. Always, mostly being first, I would say like a 99% of the time being first. Always saying good morning in Discord to us and just being an awesome member of our community. So cheers to you. Yet it is. How's it going? Hello, Michael. New live stream today. Yes, it is. Hi, Amp. How are you? Yeah, at least Titan's on time and I'm late. Maybe one of these days we'll both be on time. <laughs> what do you eat for breakfast as a chef? Uh, it depends on what I'm feeling. Today I had like a yogurt parfait bowl. So like yogurt, I made a chia seed pudding, mixed berries, and then I do like Rice Krispies on top, shredded coconut, and toasted pumpkin seeds. Or if I'm feeling like cooking during the week, like when I'm not streaming, I will make eggs. I'll do like kind of an omelet and then some, just like a piece of toast, some cheese, usually avocado and like tomato. Pretty simple breakfast though, I will say. But those are like my two go-to all the time. I always make sure that I have all those ingredients in the house. Just glad it's Friday, right? Yeah, me too. I mean, I get to see Sam next week in person, so I'm getting really excited, guys. Less than a week. He will be home on Thursday and then obviously around for the streams on the weekend. So hopefully everything goes good. I don't know if I have anything to report from this week, really. I'm going to be starting my sourdough adventure tomorrow on stream. I'm very excited for that. So if you guys have been around for a while, let's say, you know that I've been struggling with eating wheat, but slowly, I would say like, Mm, I don't know how fast time goes by. So let's say like six months. Over these last like six months, I've been slowly trying to introduce the wheat back into my system and seeing like obviously if it affects me. But yeah, one thing I read and learned and I really want to try because I so miss like bread is to create sourdough bread for myself at home and see if that makes a difference. So tomorrow I have to go to the farmer's market first thing in the morning. I'm so happy it opens at like 8 a.m. because, well, farmers don't have time to wait around, right? So I'm going to go to a grain mill that has a booth at the farmer's market and they have a bunch of different like flowers and grains. Well, we have our own mill for our stand mixer. So I'm just going to get some different grains and they did have a grain that said they said people that have wheat intolerances eat this grain and nothing affects them at all. And so like when we're talking about wheat versus gluten, gluten is the protein that is made when you mix flour and water together. So gluten is not wheat and we all get that like so messed up. So everyone always says, oh, I'm gluten free, but they don't realize that they're just talking about the protein that's made. So yeah, over these last like six months, I have done a lot of reading and obviously sourced a good organic grain. This farm says that all of their grains are grown in organic soil, nothing is sprayed, which I think really matters too. So yeah, tomorrow on stream, we will mill our grains and start our sourdough starter. I will say in the past, I haven't done this since like, I think I was going back in photos, like 2017, I went on a crazy sourdough binge in Vancouver when we lived there. But yeah, um, the sourdough starter usually takes around three weeks for it to be like fully active where it's gonna make a really nice loaf of bread. You can always use it sooner just know that it's not gonna give you the same like rise and leaven if you're not using any yeast at all. 
So we'll probably just like feed it for the next three weeks, make sure it's really happy, and then find a lot of recipes to use all that discard up in, right? Because we're not just going to throw that out. It's expensive. I think that's my only thing to catch up on. Oh, and it's really hot here. As you guys can see, I'm like in summer clothes in the middle of winter. It's 10 degrees Celsius here today, plus 10. So I've been like soaking hot. The windows are open, the heat is off, and we are ready to get cooking, let's say. Amp, you have an idea for lunch and dinner. Leftover pizza, gonna shred leftover deli roast beef and shredded cheese that you have opened up. Whatever veggies that need to be eaten, that sort of thing, that'd be good. What is your like dough that you're gonna use for it? Okay, so here's our menu for the day, guys, as well as the couple of recipes. There's only two because I thought that the cauliflower was quite simple and everyone kind of does their cauliflower on their own. But if you do like how we make the roasted cauliflower with the turmeric and lime today, just ask me in chat and I'll type it up in PDF afterwards and I'll pop it in Discord for you. Hi, flower. Hope you're doing good. Yeah, it is way too hot. It should, it should be like at least minus 10 right now, not plus 10. But I will say I think next week or wait, Monday. So in two days from now, we drop down back down to minus 20. <laughs> That's the greatest thing ever. That was my favorite to make up at camp too the pizzas on the pre-made naan breads. They turn out so dang good. It's like so fluffy in the middle still, but the crust gets nice and crispy. Straight up, yeah, naan bread is better than pita bread for pizzas, I will say that. Okay, I'm gonna open up those recipes. So we are making our pork tenderloin roast that we were supposed to make on Saturday last week, but then I ended up not having power, so a stream wasn't had. So I thought we should still make this dish because I really want it. So pork tenderloin roast, we're gonna do a homemade honey garlic sauce today. Very excited for that. A garlic butter rice that was posted in Discord. I think T. Casella, somebody from our community posted it and I said, hey, that looks really good. And then our cauliflower, we'll dress it up with some like olive oil, lime zest and juice, some turmeric different flavorings and I think that will be delicious altogether. A nice simple like late lunch early dinner sort of thing and I think this would be a good meal prep one too. Pretty simple though like I'm, I haven't had any Asian food in a while so that's why I think I want some honey garlic sauce in my life today. As well as I got this pork on sale last week so I got two pork tenderloins for $10 which I thought that was a steal of a deal. So I just took one of them out and then I froze the other one by itself because that's way too much for me. And then, oh, my groceries this week. I only spent $50 on groceries this week. I was so proud of myself. Just got a couple things from Costco and that's it. Didn't even go to the regular store because I wasn't happy with their prices. Like everything I noticed as far as like fresh produce and stuff, they bumped everything up either like a dollar or two dollars per pound from the week previous. It was like, I'm not shopping there. So I don't know if you guys do that too, but I will seriously just not even go to that store. It's like, you're stealing my money. Why am I going to support you? Hi, Ruru. Welcome in. Okay, let's make a quick little list of Ruru and away we go. Time to start a grocery store. Time to start a farm store is the thing, Ruru. You're, you're on to it. Not the grocery store that we all think that it is, but something even better. I don't know, we gotta start that farm, guys. Like here in Canada, they just released a report because I follow a lot of farmers on my social media. The average age of farmers in Canada right now is 57 years old. That's old. Hi, Hudaz. 
So I don't know about you guys, but I definitely have this itch. It's like somebody has to grow this food. That's what the guy said in the video. He's like, I am 57 years old. He's like, I'm really worried about this next generation to like start farming because we all haven't started yet, right? And we're in our mid 30s or almost 40s now. He's like, it almost has to go to that generation after us. So what is that, Gen X? Gen X? Is that what they are? Yeah. That has to like start it early on. So yeah, let it be known. I'm still looking for land every day. Sam has a plan for what we're gonna live on on the land. I don't know if you guys saw my post in Discord, but I'm thinking about selling the truck. I don't know if it's actually gonna be what we want it to be. Like the one thing that's throwing me off is the fiberglass roof as far as like structure goes. And that is one thing we didn't think about before we bought it. As well, we can probably make an extra 10K on it from what we spent just because of inflation in the last four years. So that could be like a down payment on a house for us or a piece of land. Just something we're thinking about. I don't want people to like get upset and think that we're not gonna follow through with it. Like we have a solar fund up for the truck right now, but that's still gonna be used, just not that version of truck, let's say. Robot farming, Ruru, imagine. That's what it's gonna be. <laughs> All this stuff we saw in video games is gonna come to life. Okay, Amsan read, where Canada's largest grocery store chain hit an all-time high twice this week on the Toronto Stock Exchange. What? That's not so. It had to be Loblaws, right? Is it Millennials, Gen Z, Gen Alpha? You might be right, yet it is. <laughs> Plans change and that's okay. Right is like for us to be paying like a couple hundred dollars every month just for it to sit there, right? That accrues over time. I don't even want to think about like how much money over the last four years of it sitting there that we could have put somewhere else. But that's right, plans change. I'm always trying to be as honest as I can with you guys and you're always going to come along for the adventure, whatever it is. It was Loblaws. That's hilarious how I can just guess it. <laughs> Okay, this is it, Ruru says. So the silent generation is like the one that was just born. Then it goes Gen X, Gen Y, and like millennials. So us, Gen Z, the Zoomers, and then Gen Alpha. Interesting. There's <laughs> so many. Okay, let's get started, guys. What do we wanna do first? I think we should get the pork coat, get it dressed up. And how I think we're gonna cook our pork today, we will get it seasoned and then we're gonna sear it in a pan first to get nice color around it. And then from there, we'll finish roasting it in the oven. We will pour our homemade honey garlic sauce into the roasting pan and I believe in the recipe I link, she kind of like bastes the pork as it's roasting in the oven. So it gets nice and glazed and sticky and yummy. Especially with that honey, right? It's gonna just instantly stick to the pork and then the garlic's gonna get like so nice and roasty. So I think that will be the easiest way. And then after the pork is cooked, we're just gonna slice like little, maybe half inch thick medallions. You could always pour more sauce over after. So let's say dress, sear, roast. Honey goes so good with pork. Oh my. If you've ever gone to an Asian supermarket and got the chashu, oftentimes the marinade has honey in it. So it's like sweet, salty, sticky. It's so dang good. Mm. This will be similar to that, I guess. Similar, but not the same. Okay, so after that, we will get our cauliflower already. 
we will cut it. We got our oil and salt and pepper for sure. Don't forget the turmeric. And so the turmeric is going to add a lot of color into this plate as well because it's going to turn the cauliflower this vibrant yellow. And then our lime is just going to brighten everything up with the acidity as well as the flavor from the zest, I think will be really delicious to bring the whole dish together with the garlic butter rice. So I saw this rice is garnished with garlic chips, so like crispy fried garlic pieces. And that is also why I chose this because I have some left over in the fridge. So we'll garnish it with that as well as some green onions to add color and freshness. And then we already have our garlic butter from what we made the previous week on stream. So we're going to use that up too. You're surprised that Omega wasn't ever used. It's kind of mind blowing due to there was already a Gen Alpha. That is true actually, Michael. Imagine being Generation Omega. <laughs> Amp, your mother's been insisting that you switch to raw honey because it's healthier than non-raw honey, but you're not sure about that. Yeah, that's an interesting one as well, I guess. I suppose it depends on where and how it is processed, right? Oh, all good, Michael. I actually did some laundry this morning too. Just one load. Just one quick load and I didn't even dry anything. I just hung everything up to dry. You don't think honey is pasteurized? I thought all honey is pasteurized. Well, not all of it. Like the, okay, let's, let's say the store-bought version that we are used to seeing. I'm just grabbing mine so you can see it. Okay. So I thought that this was actually a pasteurized honey. It's not. And so this is why, and this is also something we're going to deal with today. So pasteurized honey will often stay liquid longer, I find, where if you have Number one, unpasteurized. It's gonna go hard and crystallize. Yeah, always check the label, right? I'm just so used to always buying this that I don't check the label. But yeah, you can see like this isn't liquid anymore and it's pretty dang annoying. I will also say that. So we're gonna transfer this, like I'm going to put this in a pot. This is something I learned working at a previous restaurant where the owners of the restaurant also had a honey farm or like they produced honey to sell. And so they would keep it just in the buckets and whenever it would get crystallized like this, yeah, you just make a little water bath. So we're just gonna pop a little water bath. I might put like a rack underneath just so it doesn't touch the very bottom of the pot and melt the plastic because like buckets have that little rim so that the very bottom's not touching it. But that's all you do. It might take some time. Or the other thing I have done because I just got super frustrated once was just like cut off the top of this container, scoop it all out into nice wide mouth mason jars. And then from there, if this does happen again, cause it probably will, at least you can just take the top off of the jar, give it a quick little like reheat in the microwave if you have it, or just having a smaller portion of honey is easier to get liquefied again. So we'll deal with this too. So it's funny that you brought that up. So yeah, this is unpasteurized. It doesn't say that it's raw though. So is that also another designation? <laughs> There's so much to learn. I'm going to do a little Google. Okay. So I said, honey unpasteurized, is it raw with a question mark? Raw honey is not filtered or pasteurized. 
comes straight from the honeycomb, contains bee pollen, bees wax, and also could contain parts of dead bees. So raw honey is unpasteurized and unfiltered. Whereas this honey has been filtered. So it says the next line, unpasteurized honey is also called raw honey and is honey that has not been heated or filtered. It contains small amounts of pollen, wax, and propolis. I think this one's filtered though. Because if it contains everything that it said it would, no one would buy that Kirkland honey. If you saw the chunks of like beeswax and propolis and dead bees in here, no one would buy that, right? So I'm gonna say from the clarity of this, it's filtered. Listen to this on the back. Warning, do not feed honey to infants under one year of age. Hmm. Huh. Does anyone know why that is? Chase, good one. Yeah, if you have pollen allergies, don't get the raw honey because all of that stuff is mixed in. Sister gets honey from the farmer's market with honeycomb in it. It is so special if you can experience that. Yeah, when we worked in Vancouver at the brewery, we had bees in the parking lot and like a little garden. And so, yeah, the end of the season, we got to all experience how they harvested it. And like we saw the centrifuge in action. We got to eat like the bee larva. It was so dang weird. It's like a delicacy in other countries though. Amp, I heard that the Costco olive oil is good because it comes from Italian sources and is less likely to contain rotten olive oil. Yeah, that one brand, I will say I, um, I've been using coconut oil lately in my hair, but I finally used it up. I saw this one girl I follow, she's a doctor and she just uses olive oil or coconut oil in her hair. So I used that today, seemed good. But that is something you want to know, as well as I think this line makes a difference. First, cold pressed. So that's gonna be like the cleanest oil that's coming out of there. And then those notes about where it's from. This is the Costco olive oil that we're talking about, is you can trace where it's from. There's a barcode. I always say when I open it too, just so, that I can make sure I use it up before it goes bad. But yeah, the best olive oil is not gonna be mixed. It's gonna come from one source in one place. It's gonna be more expensive, but that's what's better for you. Babies can't process honey. Their immune system can't handle it. Same with cow's milk. Interesting. Yeah, or like the bacteria that Wayne just said. Grambler, if in infants don't drink water, which you find mind blowing. Wait, they don't? There's so many things to know about babies. <laughs> yeah, right, Amp? And here I thought extra virgin olive oil meant it hasn't even gone on a date yet. <laughs> Love it. Okay, maybe we should deal with that honey first because we have to use it to make our sauce. I don't even know if I have like a pot to deal with this today. Probably want like a taller pot, right? So that the steam will warm up around it. This is actually what I might build up. What if you just make it in a little steaming thing? I really think that'll work great. Just fill this up. If it doesn't work, we can always change it, right? But you never know if you don't try.
It does make sense though who does. Like the fact that they don't drink water. Because there's no nutrients in that. That's true. Bam. Honey steaming area assembled. Steamed honey. It's trending. <laughs> Don't even talk to me about Fiji water. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. Oh, and I got Shimkin broth cooling back here, if you guys saw that sneaky back there. I made another bunch of chicken broth. Okay, pork tendy. There she is. So, uh, a lot of times we're taught to clean all of this connective tissue off and a little bit of fat. But honestly, lately I've been trying to cook meat. And it's like whole form because you could always cut that off afterwards, after it's cooked. But I find the less that you disturb like the whole muscle like this, kind of the better and more juicy it cooks up. So I'm not even gonna clean it up at all. We'll just get it prepped, seasoned for the sear in the pan. And then we're good to go. <laughs> Amp, you're with me on this, Amp. Thank you. Okay, what do I want to like dress this on? Maybe just this little container? Maybe even just the lid will be awesome, actually. Because the pork is too long for a plate, I think. It's got this. I'll take it out of the bag, pop it on there. As well, we should always take out larger pieces of meat like this earlier on from the fridge because they roast up more evenly when it's not ice cold. Yum, that actually looks so good. I'm gonna pour those juices out. So we do also know that the pork tenderloin we can think of it very similar to like a beef tenderloin where it is a lean meat. It is a lean meat, but it is tender. But that also makes it pretty delicate in my mind. So you really don't want to overcook it, right? Because then it will dry out because it doesn't have that fat inside to keep it moist. There's only that little bit that you can see on the outside, and that's it. We gotta fill up the salt proc. Do salt and pepper. I think because we're making a honey garlic sauce, we should leave the pork pretty plain. Keep in mind the honey garlic sauce is gonna have some soy sauce in there. So that's gonna add some more salt too. So don't go too crazy on seasoning the pork. You can always add more after, right? What's everyone else getting up to today, guys? I think after this, I'm definitely going for a walk. Oh, I got to see my city kitty yesterday. We had a good time together. I think it's really starting to get to know me because I was giving it pets. Like it often, this neighborhood cat that I see, it will like roll over onto the ground on its back and just like be like this with its stomach. It loves when I like put my hand on its stomach like this. But yesterday it like grabbed my arm and like just like gave my hand like a little like nibble. Like you know how sometimes dogs put your hand in their mouth? It claimed me. It was like, this is love right there. Mickey, had your aunt and uncle over for dinner this evening? Did you cook for them? OK. 
Okay, sprinkling our salt. And we'll season it all over both sides. And as we can see, it gets thicker near this end and thinner near that end. You cooked a hot pot, but the potatoes were hard. Oh no. You just put them in a little bit too late, maybe. Did you make the Lancashire like last time? Just working on some art, fun. What kind of art are you making? And you made chocolate chip cookies yesterday, nom. Hello, Nightwalker. How's it going? That's weird, Mickey. Wait, I think we've had that happen before too. Wayne, was there a time where we cooked potatoes at work and they just wouldn't cook? You might have not been there. Get Russ's Right? The ones that did cook the yeah. So this one time that happened to us too, Mickey, when we were at work and like that was so stressful because you're trying to like feed basically 200 people. Like you cook your potatoes like usual and we cooked them for like an hour and a half and they were still rock hard. So we had to like switch something up on the fly, I think. It was nuts, but I've never, never had that happen before until that time. And yeah, we went to like cut open the potatoes to see if there was something weird and they were all black inside. Like not rotten, but just, it was like black colored. The mince was cooked and the mushrooms and the onions. So yeah, it couldn't, it might have not been you, dude. They just went soft or no, they wouldn't go soft and they've been in the slow cooker all day. Yeah, right? Am says sometimes you just get a bad potatoes. I guess if you wanted, you could go back to where you bought them and just let them know that. And probably when you do go do that, they'll probably already be aware because someone else has gone. Usually that's the case for me. Oh guys, I also applied for another job yesterday. They have a labor posting at that goose site again. So I applied again. This time I also attached a cover letter again this time too. So hopefully that gets me somewhere. Okay, we're just gonna put this to the side. Gonna start to temp up. The Oscars are next month, so you're doing a series of little Hollywood and movie-based designs. Do you ever like share what you create, like photos of it and stuff? I would love to see that. Yet it is. Okay, this cauliflower I got on sale last week, $2.99. This is a budget meal, I guess, today. $5 for the pork, three bucks for this, we're at eight bucks for like three meals. Add our little bit of rice, 10 bucks. 10 bucks for three meals, you can't even beat that. I know the cauliflower is not organic. It's mutant, but hey, <laughs> beggars can't be choosers. I think like what I eat organic versus not organic. I definitely try to have what? I don't even know if we eat like 50% of our food organic, maybe 40. 
probably 40% of what I buy is organic and slowly it's getting better and better as I like weed out the things that I don't need. And I know I can spend like a little bit more money on the really good things. Mutants are delicious. Yes, post them there. I just, do we have an art section already set up? I think. Maybe we don't actually, but you could always post them in fun photos if you want. Okay. I don't think we're going to cook all of this today. That's going to be so much dang cauliflower. Maybe we'll save some for a soup next week or something. You can offset your organic intake with water. Yeah, only if you have a water filter. <laughs> Mickey, next time you have your aunt and uncle over, you're doing sausages and fries. Do it up. Why? You're scared now? You're scared from the potatoes? I will tell you, the last time I made the chicken broth on the day where we didn't have power, well, when we did get power back, I think there was like a mass surge and my chicken broth like exploded all over the stovetop. It was effed up and I got so scared. I hate when that happens, right? It's just so annoying. And it makes you like not want to do it again. But this week, had a lot of courage, and I made chicken broth again. <laughs> and it didn't explode. But my god, the stove's never been cleaner. <laughs> okay, we're gonna use half. And how I usually do cauliflower is just cut a little bit through, and then we can break the rest apart and you get less of the like little pieces falling off like that. At the end of the day, Mickey, this is what I tell people, especially when they're just starting out cooking, is it's just food, dude. It's just food. Your ego might have been like bruised a little bit from it, but did you still get an edible product at the end, even if the potatoes were kind of poopy? That's hilarious, true caretaker. You've been feeding your son cauliflower rice for years and he can't even tell the difference. Hey, if you make it right, you shouldn't be able to tell, right? Mm. This is a good one. You know, sometimes you have cauliflower and it's like really funky tasting. This one is like so crisp. So crisp and clean. So I usually leave my roasting pieces pretty big. So I like to get some color on there. How do I want to do this? Maybe just in half this way. And once it's roasted, it's not that hard to just cut with a butter knife or whatever you have around. Just I find cauliflower goes way too mush if you cut it too small. It cooks too quick. Yes. Yeah, that is like life. I also have broccoli. You know what, Amp? We might actually make that on Sunday. Now that I'm thinking about it, because all we're making on Sunday is a Italian sausage pasta. I think we're going to make that so I can eat it through the week. Okay, I'm going to pop it in Discord so I don't forget. I got milk to use up. I got the cheddar cheese. Already there. That's such a comfort meal or comfort food. Either broccoli with cheese or cauliflower with cheese. Like I'm trying to think of how my mom made it when I was young. Okay, so we don't want that. Is that gonna be enough actually? We might actually do more. Yeah, I can't remember like how my mom made that sauce. I think she like put cheese whiz with milk or something. It was something pretty dirty like that, right? 
back then. Moms weren't making more nay sauces at home. If you see little blemishes like that, just cut it off before you cut it up any further. Is that really the only blemish so far though? That is not bad at all. Get that stuff gone too. You're learning that the juice of the roast beef is keeping the pizza or keeping the rest of the pizza from burning. <laughs> nice. Thank you, beef, for your services. I'm glad it's working out, Amp. Happy Friday, Cookie. Another insane tier two resub. 57 months in a row. How is your week, sir? We're just in cauliflower land right now. Thank you for being here today. Hopefully you're done work. Okay, that's what we'll do for roasting and we'll save this. How do I want to save it? I think I'll just put it in a container rather than wrapping it in plastic. Yum. Getting ready to make eggplant parm for dinner tonight. Right, because it's Friday. So you usually try to go meatless, right? That sounds so, so yummy. Was really excited yesterday at Costco because I saw they had Fior de Latte, if you guys know what that is is a form of soft matzah in brine but they had two big balls of it in separate containers for 10 bucks and like the usual matzah pack that i've been getting is nine or 950 and i didn't like how it tasted last time so yesterday because like when you buy cheese like that you kind of need to try it right away right if you're a cheese fiend like me so i made a little snack plate yesterday of like some sliced smoked sausage from a friend i sliced up some of that matzo and then just did some salt and pepper on top and the red pepper eggplant spread from the italian market and just like some olives on the side. And oh my gosh, it was good. So your eggplant parm totally reminded me of that. Okay, let's pop this in a bowl to get it dressed up and then we'll put it on a roasting pan. And then once this is all trayed up, we'll get into our honey garlic sauce. I didn't link a recipe today for this cauliflower cookie because we're making it together on stream. I probably could have found one online, but I wanted to make it my own thing today. Let's see how it turns out. If it's really good, I'll type it up and link it in Discord for us. Seeing how our little honey steaming station is going. It's actually going so good, you guys. The honey is getting steamed on the stove top back here. We were learning about honey before you came in, Cookie. The Kirkland brand of honey in the big container, we found out that it's actually unpasteurized. That's why it always uh, crystallizes. So my almost entire container was crystallized. So we just have it back here. Actually, this other view would be better. I set up a steamer pot. And we just have it sitting back there to liquefy while we're working on some other stuff. 
That way the honey is not directly, or the container is not touching the bottom of the pot where the plastic's gonna melt. So after it's all liquefied, we are gonna pour all the honey out of that container because it's so hard to deal with in there, just into a bunch of wide mouth mason jars and that's easier to use. Honey garlic pork, hello. You're from the UK, welcome in. We have some other UK viewers. How's your day going? Honey garlic pork is pretty popular in North America, I would say. I've been craving, I think a little bit of Asian foods lately. So that's why we're gonna make this up. I got my salt and pepper there. We're gonna put turmeric on the cauliflower. What else? Why would like sesame, I'm looking at the sesame seeds and that looks good to like dress it and roast with it. Turmeric, lime, salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of coriander and cumin. These are hard decisions, guys. How much more time do you think it will take to liquefy the honey? I'll show you where we're at, Amp. If I lift it up and see, it's like just kind of starting to get liquefied under there. Probably a couple hours. From the times that we've done it in like a restaurant, it takes a couple hours. Everything cauliflower, ooh, that would be so good too. Just put some everything bagel spice on the cauliflower to roast. I mean, we've done it on potatoes before and it is life changing. So olive oil to get everything to stick. And I think it helps it brown and keep it from drying out. We'll just pop everything over this and then we'll toss it all together. heavy on the pet. Didn't know you could add everything onto potatoes. Just learned something new today, Amp. Okay, our turmeric. We'll definitely get a spoon for that one because you don't want that going everywhere. Unless you want highlighter, yellow, everything. Do like a teaspoon. Turmeric also helps with inflammation. It's really good for you. Some people just make tea with it as well. So our coriander, I just buy the whole coriander seeds and then toast them and grind them up as I need. We'll do more coriander than cumin because cumin is such a strong flavor I find that it will quickly overpower everything. But with cauliflower, just that little bit is so dang good. But wait, there's more. Get the lime. Then we'll need our zester. So a lot of the flavor from citrus fruit comes from the skin or the zest rather than from the juice. So if you really want that citrus flavor, you gotta zest it.
<laughs> now add some ranch, Kate. Make it a proper Midwest salad. Nike. <laughs> How are you doing, dude? Okay, so all you do... Back and forth. We don't want to get too much of the white stuff because it will be bitter. Oh, it smells good already. <laughs> Amp, just no. <laughs> I'm good, dude. Thank you for asking. Happy to be back here today. Hey, that's half of the lime juice, or zested, not juiced. I think that's enough. And then just like, whoa, tap that around if you can. And then I usually leave the juice part of the citrus for our turmeric lime cauliflower until after it's roasted. If you put it on now, the juice is gonna concentrate and that could make it come out too sour. So I usually just like keep this bowl on the side if you want. Then after the cauliflower is roasted, just dump it back in real quick, toss it with the juice, and then you can put it back onto the roasting tray for people. Or just squeeze the lime juice over the cauliflower on the tray is probably even easier, let's be honest. Give that a little zhuzh. Sometimes I get in there with my hands for these sort of veggies where it looks like it's not really distributing it too evenly. Just give everything a little rub together. Massage it. That's looking pretty dang good. Now I usually just like dig to the bottom. Grab some little bitly so we can try how it tastes before we put it on the tray. Mmm. You get the turmeric and you get the lime. That is interesting. I think that's gonna be really good together. It almost tastes like coconut milk or something with those flavors. That's weird. I guess with the coriander, cumin, and the lime and turmeric, that's very much like curry flavor. Make sure you wash your fingies real good so they're not stained yellow forever. Okay, we'll get a sheet pan. Prepared next. An infused breakfast, that's what you're thinking of requesting. Do you know what it's gonna be yet? Thought I'd put this stuff away while we came over here. So lately when I roast stuff, I always do a foil and then parchment. It really seems to contain the oil. Then the pan stays really nice and clean.
you might just have the same roll of parchment. I got this one, which actually is almost done. But then we got the other box, right? Because it usually comes in the two pack. I haven't found parchment cheaper than the one at Costco. I've looked around and so far this one is still the least expensive. Infused chicken and waffles, dude. I love it. I'm just gonna use this one that's not really dressed to like wipe out the bowl. This is the spatula. Cause we don't wanna waste any of that goodness in there. I don't even know the last time I had chicken and waffles. It had to be on a stream where we made them before. I usually make the chicken and waffle with the blueberry thyme sauce and the cornmeal waffle. So we're just spreading out the cauliflower to roast, make sure it's not piled on top of itself so it steams. That looks good. That way there's lots of surface area for browning because that's flavor. That's ready to go. I would say cauliflower takes less than 20 minutes to roast in the oven at 425 Fahrenheit. So less than 20 minutes. We'll have to make sure that the oven is at the proper temp for the cauliflower and the pork. <laughs> Amp, you know you get your foil from Costco when it's a two pack. Hey, just makes the most sense. Okay, where are we? We dress the pork. We need to sear it and roast it still. We cut the cauliflower and trade it. We just have our garlic butter rice left to cook, as well as the honey garlic sauce. And then I'm gonna write on the bottom some green onion to slice for garnish. I think that's it. And I already have some chopped parsley in the fridge from last week's stream is looking really good still. So we can probably sprinkle that over the cauliflower after it's roasted too. Okay, so honey garlic sauce. If you guys are wondering why I'm wearing a tank top already today, it's cause it's plus 10 degrees here. It's way too dang hot. All right, pork tenderloin with honey garlic sauce. Seasoned with a rub, seared until golden, then oven baked in an incredible honey garlic sauce until it's sticky on the outside and juicy on the inside. A quick and easy pork filet. I often don't hear a pork tenderloin called filet, but we call beef tenderloin filet, so it makes sense. A quick and easy pork filet recipe with high returns for very minimal effort. That's like my kind of recipe, let me tell you. That's an interesting way to say this. Pork tenderloin is like chicken breast. It's a lean tender cut of meat and when cooked just right, it's juicy and succulent. I suppose, I mean, I compared it more to beef, but I suppose chicken as well. Send all this snow over. Actually, it's coming on Monday. We're supposed to be getting 10 to 15 centimeters. Good luck, Wayne. <laughs> You're not going nowhere. But it's coming tight and don't worry. That doesn't mean it's gonna stick around though. Okay, so like I said earlier, she says in the recipe, it's also very easy to overcook your pork tenderloin. 
and overcooked tenderloins are dry and also bland. I mean, not really bland, but definitely dry, right? You're losing all that moisture the longer you cook it. Really, Johnny? I love that. You're doodling a beef and cheddar from Arby's. Dude, I foxed with that so hard when I was young. Yes, please. I can't remember the last time I ate a beef and cheddar, though, nor would it probably taste the same. That's why I haven't. Can one do a thing? I don't know. Can they? Welcome in, dude. How have you been? I feel like it's been a while. Beef and cheddars are so fire. I, like, was obsessed with them when I was little. Yep. Every time Dad's like, you want to go to Arby's today? Fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> 60 centimeters of snow? I don't even know what we would do if we got all that. She says this, if you slightly overcook this pork tenderloin, maybe no one will notice with the sauce that you put over top, right? I mean, we often say meat shouldn't require a sauce, but it is nice to have with it. If you cook your meat properly, it doesn't need the sauce. So it's still juicy. But it is always satisfying to have a dish that is like complete and it has a sauce to bring everything together. If you have the time, take that little bit of extra effort. Thank goodness I'm not in Calgary. It's not only warm, it's very windy there. Whew, 54K, that's what Sam's wind was like two days ago. That's probably the same wind. That's not so, I mean, it gets so windy down there, I will say. And that's why I don't think I ever want to live in Southern Alberta, because I hate the wind. Just say, oh. Try just Kansas, Nike. Try just Kansas. Okay, so still scrolling down here. Is it broken? Calgary's gonna get even windier next week. No, thank you. Yeah, everyone always thinks is like, okay, I wanna buy like land by the mountains. They instantly always think if they're from here that I'm going south. It's like, nah, man, I'm going north. <laughs> Guys, it's broken. Okay, let me just turn off that command. What the heck? We had that command. For how long? Where is my Vune? Guys, I have to message Vune to see how we can fix it. This is a tragedy. Not the worst tragedy, but still. What is it? Stream's taken a vacation from the weather. It's just too confused. <laughs> I mean, we could always blame Bonk. <laughs> He'd kill us. Okay. Okay, listen to this. The honey garlic sauce used in this recipe has also made an appearance in various other ones on the website. So honey garlic salmon, honey garlic chicken, and even used as a dipping sauce for the crispiest ever baked chicken wings. I will say, having leftover honey garlic sauce, that shouldn't go bad in your fridge. There's so many different things you can put it with. <laughs> Thanks for blaming Bonk, guys. She says it's one of those terrific back pocket sauces that works with virtually every protein. And some of the other things she said to serve with the honey garlic pork tenderloin, 
she made a lemon potato salad in the photo and steamed green beans or like baked veggies and rice she said you could do couscous with tomato and feta but i think like the honey garlic flavor definitely is better with more asian influence on the dishes that's just me Ooh, cauliflower mash we could have totally made that today I'm kind of mashed out though because I was finishing up those mashed potatoes from last week's stream and me oh my they were rich <laughs> but so good. Would it work for a chicken nuggets dip? Of course it would. Yes. Even like pork dry ribs. Lots of different things. Mickey you're waiting about the job at the hotel. They haven't got back to you since. One thing you could always do just to help your own self out a bit is to follow up. Especially if you want that job, be that squeaky wheel that gets the grease. That's really all I got for this one. But even then, that doesn't guarantee you everything, right? You were one of those people affected by the outage. Ooh, I did see that the AT&T thing had to email in. Email was your only form of communication until 4 p.m. Central. I mean, I've been toying with that idea, like my bro and I talked about that lately and same with my parents. Like, what are you guys gonna do one day if you wake up and your phone is just black? Like you can't get a hold of anyone because you don't have a landline phone. Just something to think about. I haven't even come up with what I would do. I still haven't come up with a conclusion to it yet. Go in tomorrow, ask them at the hotel. Yes. I mean, the thing that I was also thinking about doing for the job that I want is because I know there is an office here for the gold mine in Edmonton and that's the, where the recruiter is. Is it weird for me to just walk in and like apply in person? I know people don't do that anymore, but like, would that even get me further? I don't know. Okay. Ooh, interesting. We can actually probably still add this and it would be so good. So just to get a bit more color on the pork tenderloin for the rub, as well as the salt and pepper, she added some paprika. And so that's gonna make the outside of the pork go this like really beautiful red kind of pinkish color when you roast it. That will make it look more like a chashu when it's finished. That's crazy, Michael. You think you would talk to your neighbors more to get to know them if your phone went? I mean, for me, why I think about it is because like my parents don't live here, right? So if that happened, I don't know how I would ever get a hold of them. But if you live all around your family and friends and stuff, then I think you're A-OK. -okay. A landline. It's like the phone that's connected to the wall still, not just a cell phone. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, Nike, right? As you were out of work for that day, you think you're gonna get some compensation? Hey, listen to this. The honey garlic sauce. This is all the sauces. Apple cider vinegar, soy sauce, and honey. Where's the garlic? Okay, so when the pork is almost seared in the pan, we add our garlic to the pan. She says three garlic cloves, but we can definitely do more than that. Probably like five or six, I'm going to say. So we fry our garlic with the pork just on the side until it's golden. And then you just pour in the mixture of the vinegar, soy sauce, and honey. Turn your pork over, she says, and then back into the oven for 15 minutes. And then we can baste it once 
during that time. That is so easy. I totally thought we were gonna like make the whole sauce together in a separate pot and then pour it over the pork after, but that's even easier than what I thought. They're getting rid of those in the States. That's what I'm saying. Nike is like, I don't have a landline. I don't think my parents even have one. I think a lot of people that I know that live in the country definitely still have one. But yeah, if you're a city dweller, Hey, is, is there any city dwellers in chat that still have a landline phone? This should be an interesting one. Okay, so we need our garlics. How's our honey doing over here? Get in there. Oh shit, it's actually working. Look. There's like an inch liquefied. I didn't think it was gonna work that good. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna just like pop the lid a bit because it's probably gonna create some steam inside. <laughs> we don't want the honey to blow up. <laughs> Do we still have the phone boxes here? Uh... Very far and few between. And even then, if you see a telephone booth, half the time it doesn't even work. <laughs> okay, let me go grab some of these things and then we'll come back and do our garlic. So apple cider vinegar. I'm going to use a little bit of this sweet soy sauce that I have as well. We got the honey over there. Oh, and I said a little bit of paprika on the pork. We're just going to go regular paprika. I don't think we're going to go smoked because that would really, I think, affect the flavor of the dish. Michael, your parents have a landline, but you don't. Creep Tumor, you have a landline, but it's over your internet connection. And the same as your cell provider. Is that like the only way they do them now? I wonder. Right? I don't even know if you can get an old fashioned one. <laughs> I love how we say it's old fashioned. But it's not that long ago that we had those telephones. Just the biggest amount of paprika that you could ever need. So we uh, first seasoned our pork earlier with just some salt and pepper really simple and then we just noticed in the recipe that she put a bit of paprika on the outside i'm just going to sprinkle some of that amp you can still get a landline at the office depot whatsapp is the way to go if you don't have cell service but you have wi-fi I will say, yeah, when I was traveling, WhatsApp was key, but that was like so many years ago. That's cool to see that it's still the same. I'm just going to sprinkle the paprika on this one side. Or I'll just go from here now and give it kind of a press all over. <laughs> I think the sound of the dial-up internet will never leave our brains, Mickey. That's like the greatest sound ever. Is there some that's going to fall off? Not really. Guess we did that way, though. Okay. That just got good looking. You're able to get rotary phones from Amazon. Those were the funnest. Yeah, also interesting. Why were phones always in the kitchen? Like you had this little, there was always this little cabinet beside the stove or not the stove, beside the fridge that you could put your phone and like the the phone, the phone book, and the address books. <laughs> I 
Yeah, you even have a jack in your kitchen. No, that doesn't. Oh, actually we do. I just look back there. It does exist. It's right there behind the blender. MSN Messenger. I keep seeing these memes online. It's like, imagine it's 1997. You just woke up from a nap and nothing that you saw in the last years is real. I was like, oh man. <laughs> Okay, hey, now we'll put that back aside. We'll mix this in a container to pour it into the pan. Probably need a little whisk to get that honey mixed in. You wanna go back to the 80s? I never been there, was it cool? Hey, that's a good point, Amp. I was told once in many places the laws had it where the phone must be placed in the kitchen because that's where it's most likely for an emergency to happen. Fair enough. That or like the garage, I guess. <laughs> okay, so how much of each of these do we need? I have some sweet soy sauce that I'm also gonna use with regular soy sauce. So it's half a cup of honey. She said you could also use maple syrup, which I think is a good note. So honey is the most ingredient and then everything else is a lot less. Like three tablespoons of vinegar and one and a half tablespoon of the soy sauce. I don't know if I can get this. Oh, yet. I need to like try and get some of the liquid down through this side. Let's see. I got a good long spatula for this. I'm gonna dig through down this side to see if we can get some to pour out. But she's working though. We're steaming that honey. Ah, does it just not fit? That's BS. Okay, let me see if there's one more. Might just have to go with a butter knife. Wait, wait. <laughs> just had a deep thought here. outside haha -ha. I win ready so this is a two cup container Just need to swivel this little thing again. There we go. <laughs> Chefs always come up with the weirdest things, but like it works. The Canadian in me, yeah. Okay, so it says maple syrup, we gotta use it. <laughs> Okay, back in the steamer. That's fun. Yeah, Costco lost this round. I'm knocking on the wood. So three tablespoons of vinegar. That's kind of like a lot. I'm gonna go a little bit less to start and we'll always, we can taste it and then we can always add more. Like one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. And then, have you guys ever seen this? 
we got really obsessed with it in Vancouver, we would use this to make a ginger garlic glaze for our chicken wings at the brewery. It's like um, a sweet thickened soy sauce. But I really like the flavor of it. And I thought this would be lovely to also use today. Wonder if anyone tried your ice cream toppings? For what? Did I miss something? Okay, now we're gonna stir this together. Just go grab a little spoon so we can taste it. Nice thing about that honey being warm is this just mixed in so nice. It's not causing us any issues. I told you this sauce was gonna be dark. So it looks really thin now, but that's because we're cooking it in the oven with the pork. Definitely get the honey. Not tasting like a ton of salt, so I'm just gonna put the rest of this soy sauce. And then a little bit more vinegar. Reese's Puffs minis on top of the Tillamook vanilla bean. Mm, I want that. I just want the ice cream. I don't even need the toppings. Let's also make this note. If the sauce is really runny later when we take everything out of the oven, we could always thicken it really quickly with a cornstarch slurry. So just some cornstarch and cold water. The sauce has to be simmering still. So just take the pork out of the pan and then whisk that in until it's thick enough to your liking. Mm. That's like balanced now. It's like sweet, salty, and then the acid just kind of cleans your palate at the end. Cool. Holy shit, cookie. <laughs> you actually went to look? Oh, wait, I turned off the command. One sec. One sec. Okay, now try. Now try. I turned it off earlier because everyone was using it and it just wasn't working and we got confused. No! <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna switch this. I'm copying what you wrote after the command and I'm gonna put that into stream elements. Oh my Lord, I can't. What, what did Vune even do? That link is insane. I don't even know how he set that up. That is beyond my competency. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get all of the garlics out. We'll put this away. And then the last thing we gotta do is just prep our rice. How is this garlic doing in here? That is the question. It's actually 12 degrees Celsius today. Insanity. Whoa, that went up so dang high. Okay, this side of the garlic is like messed up. It's 17C there, Nike. Oh, look at this. What is with this garlic? 
also why I need to start a farm. I don't just like open the veggies that I buy and be like, oh, what happened? It should be minus 10 here still. And that's like if it was warm. So that is why I'm wearing a tank top in the house today. Very unseasonal. That's also why in two days from now, it is minus 20. <laughs> That's normal. Four weeks ago is minus 22, right? Remember when Sam came home? Ah. When Sam came home, it was actually colder here than the Arctic that time. That was funny. Yeah. Only in Canada can 10C in late February be too warm. Like, what, we can say Canada, probably like Finland, Norway, places like that. The wintry countries where we should have lots of winter. Just trimming that off because it looked gross. Is that enough garlic for honey garlic sauce? I don't think so. They said three cloves? In what world? Not this one. Cookie you saw I get to got to pet this city kitty. She's the cutest. Actually, I don't know if it's a he or a she. But I almost walked by at first. You know, you just have that feeling though. It's like today I think is going to be the day and it's a house that's on the corner. So I, I have this thing. It's like, okay, don't like peek to see if it's there. Just like walk around the corner. And then you like, I, we usually just make eye contact if she's sitting on the stoop, but yeah, she was like hiding under a little chair. I almost walked by. And then I felt like being stared at. And I seen her and I said, come here. And she just like starts meowing. So dang cute. So maybe today will also be the same. Usually when it's really nice though, she's outside. I want to like knock on the door of that house and just say like your cat is the best part of my walks. <laughs> Would that be weird, guys? Sam's like, you should bring, like, treats for it. I was like, I would, like, have to ask the owner, though. Because so many pets have allergies and stuff. In Vancouver, if you don't like the weather, just wait 15 minutes. That's kind of accurate. There's also been, like, weeks where, yeah, it's just gray for a whole week. It's only 9C in Souk right now. That's chilly, see? Like, we should be way colder than that. It's colder in the rainforest than it is here. Okay, I think this will be enough garlic. <laughs> it's gonna smell so good later. Thanks for reminding me of the house, Amp, in Souk. I told you guys about the garbage truck fiasco, right? That happened with that house? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Souk. Okay, let's get garlic press. So this is not going into the sauce. This gets fried up in the pan first with the pork and then we pour the liquids in and then into the oven. Looking through a vintage high times I had pics of a grow in Vancouver and it was BC Godbud. Legendary strain. 
legendary. Okay, so let's just get a small container to put this in. I think I have one here. Cleant. So we just fry the garlic in the pan first while the pork is searing and make sort of this little like pan sauce all together rather than doing it separate in a pot. Yeah, I thought it was totally different too, Amp. But let's roll with it, because this seems pretty dang easy. And the base of this sauce tastes good too. But like I said, the only thing I'm kind of worried about it maybe being a bit liquidy at the end. We'll see how the honey reduces and stuff and go from there. I got a hunger today. I'm like so ready for food. It's getting really sticky. <laughs> Don't know if you guys notice that when you deal with a lot of garlic like this, it just makes your fingers so sticky. You don't want to waste it though. Probably my least favorite thing to chop in a kitchen is garlic, like minced garlic. That's probably my least favorite. That's why you guys will always see me using this. I don't know, I just feel like it's a waste of time. That's why I can never understand like restaurants. You'll never see a garlic press in a restaurant. But I feel like it's so handy for just like these smaller amounts. To just do nice and quick. That one's definitely a personal preference. Now that is a healthy amount of garlic, I would say. <laughs> yes, that one too. Okay, so yeah, I will say, I was really happy to work in a restaurant where we had a designated like microplane to use for garlic. Cause yeah, every time I made polenta, I'd have to mince garlic for it, right? For the polenta fries. Your mother-in-law gifted you a mini cheese grater that is perfect for garlic and onion. Oh yeah, hey. Because I always find that those little teeth in those mini like graters are quite aggressive for citrus. But for garlic and onion, that makes sense. Okay, I'm just going to take a quick bathroom break. I will be back in a moment.
I am back. <laughs> Onions are what drive you up the wall to cut, especially if you want them diced really small. You gotta keep practicing. Plus a sharp knife really helps, I find. Like anytime I get frustrated in cooking, it's usually when my knife is really dull and it just starts taking forever to do anything, right? And you have to put so much more effort into cutting. Thanks, Michael. Okay, so where are we at on our list? Honey garlic sauce is basically done. We got our garlic butter rice up next. I haven't actually read through this recipe. Let's see if there's anything fancy here that we need to know. We're really garlicking it up today. She says, this is like the rice version of garlic bread. Oh, this next line kind of threw me off. She's like, in my world, garlic bread goes with almost any meal except Asian food. I was like, wait, but we're making Asian food. She says, but this garlic butter rice, this goes with anything. Western, Asian, Mexican, Mediterranean, French. She says garlic rice is a dish that is found in some Asian countries, and I think it's quite common in the Philippines. This is my everyday version. Yes, it's garlicky and buttery, but not insanely so, she says. I like it. There is a limit to everything, right? We still wanna be able to taste the other flavors in the dish today. Definitely feel free to up the garlic and the butter to your taste but I suggest trying the base recipe first and adjusting it for yourself. You can always stir in extra butter at the end if you want. So we already have our garlic chips done, but in the recipe, she tells you how to do it. We've done this before on stream. And all I usually do is slice my garlic cloves nice and thin, and then we slowly fry them in oil until they start to go golden and crispy. And then you just strain them out of the oil. I usually save the oil to use for cooking. And then you have these really crunchy pieces. So that's already good to go for the garnish. Another thing that she sprinkles on top after the rice is cooked is green onion. So we'll slice that. And then this, is our garlic butter that we'll use from when we made our compound butter for our steak. And one thing different with this, so we did fresh garlic parsley, as well as a little bit of lemon zest and juice in here, which I thought would be so good to go with the rice and everything else today. Like there's lime in the cauliflower, there's lemon here, all good things. So those are good to go. It couldn't be more a perfect recipe if you have those things in your house. Hello, I love your username. Thanks for the follow, friend. Sofa King Delicious. <laughs> I had to say it with spaces, otherwise I might get in trouble. Amp says, Philippine cuisine is a melting pot of various outsider influences. I think we can say that with like a lot of East Asia almost, hey? Thank you very much, friend. Greek? A Greek on a Friday? How are you doing, dude? Okay, I'm scrolling down still. She says, sometimes I stir the scallions into the rice. Other times we just sprinkle it on top, do whatever you want. So how does this rice actually get cooked then? Oh, she uses chicken broth instead of water. Look at this liquid gold. So we'll use some of that. 
<laughs> that race just got so good. Your days all run together. It happens. It's easy to happen. You're doing good though, Greek. Okay, so we put a little bit of garlic butter in the pot with the rice first. Coat it, add our broth, put the lid on, cook the rice, garnish it. Couldn't be easier. So we need to measure out two and a half cups of chicken broth to one and a half cups of rice. That is a lot. Why don't I do half of that amount for myself? Yum. Tomorrow on stream, we're using coconut milk. We're making chowder. My favorite one from Victoria Pacific Rim chowder. It's unlike any traditional chowder you've ever had. Right? That's a lot of rice. So I'm going to do three quarters of a cup of rice. But then they also like adjusted their ratio for the liquid. It's not a one, like a two to one. Let's just keep that in mind. Maybe I'll do a cup and a half of the broth or even just two cups. Isn't rice mostly a one-to-one? -one? Well, I usually do like one cup of rice kernels to two cups of water. You may have found a house in Alberta. It's in the mountains. I was literally talking about that. I was laughing because every time I say I want to buy a farm in Alberta, everyone thinks I'm going south. But it's like, no, the farms still exist up north and it's so much nicer there. Greek, I'm so excited for you. Okay, let me go get the rice. Yeah, possibly. You always have to be a bit wary going into things like that, right? I mean, I will say I celebrated having a job and then I didn't have a job. Don't get too excited until it's all, all settled up. Okay, there's our three quarters of a cup. This is jasmine rice, by the way. So since it's almost time to start cooking, let's turn our oven on. Start heating it up. I'm gonna go pretty high temp, 425 Fahrenheit, because my oven cooks a little cool. Like that would be more closer to like 405. I find it has a 20 degree lull there. Nice, Canmore. I was talking to a past coworker and he said, Bragg Creek is really beautiful in Alberta. And that is south. But then I looked it up and oh my goodness, it was so expensive to go live there. That's why I think like as when you go south, because it's warmer, there's gonna be more people there. We are going to measure out two cups of this liquid chicken broth for the three quarters of a cup of rice. I think because it's not just water, you need a little bit more. Bragg Creek, it's gorgeous. Yeah, that's what my friend was saying. So I was, you're we kind of catching up and I was letting him know what Sam and myself are wanting to do. And he's like, yeah, I have friends there. 
and it's like just the nicest place ever. And so I went and looked. I was like, there's no way I could ever buy a house there. Radium is nice too, yes. Bragg Creek, yeah. According to life, should cost less.com. A good rule of thumb is to swap out or substitute the water for chicken stock and broth on a cup for cup basis. So if the recipe calls for one cup of water, you replace it with the one cup of broth. I mean, that's what I always thought, Am. We can always have that little bit measured, not add it right away near the end of cooking if it looks dry and that the rice isn't all cooked through. You can add it, right? Blondie? How you doing, my guy? How was your week? Okay, so our oven is heating up. Our rice is measured out. We need a little pot. And we just have to slice up some green onion really quick and then we can focus on cooking. And hello, red syrup. Cookie, you indulged in some nice couscous with homemade broth last night. Mmm, yum. Yum. Yeah, tomorrow I am going to the farmer's market first thing to pick up some local organic grains from a farmer there so that we can come home and mill them together and get my starter going. Very excited. And so I'm going to talk to the farmers while I'm there grabbing the grains because this is going to be something that I'll probably be picking up quite frequently. See if they want to maybe do a little collab or something. You're a disc golfer. Redwood Meadows has a challenging yet scenic course. Fun. I will say when we were like road tripping through California and met one of our followers from stream, he's also a disc golfer and like took us around to all the different courses. How cool. Like here in Canada, it's not as popular, right? I'm going to give these a rinse because there was a little bit of dirt in there when I looked. Yeah, you own a business. Is that considered a proper job? If you want to know more about that Greek, talk to Samo. Because, like, he's lived and worked in Jasper, right? And he still knows quite a few people there, too. Really? In Calgary, you have over a dozen courses? That is getting up there, I would say. Okay, so thin slices of this. Red syrup. I do love a pearl couscous. That texture. Mm. I would say it's much more like pasta at that point, right? You added too much roast beef to your pizza. I think you sprained your right hand carrying it. Amp. I mean, there's worse things that could happen than having too much roast beef. That one's being weird and slimy, so I'm not gonna cut it. Very true, Greek. Very true. Because, yeah, like, Jasper is so small. 
it's like you'd you'd have to make sure there's even room for your business to operate there, right? Never mind if you wanted to even grow it. Hey, hey, let's go over. Gotta switch this up. You guys were all asking about the honey earlier. <laughs> Amp, <laughs> yeah. Trying to play disc golf today. Look at this, guys. It's almost all liquefied. Okay, I'm. I don't really want to focus and like worry about the water running out while we're cooking. So I'm just going to turn that off for now. It's basically all liquefied though. Sweet. And then we're going to come down. Yeah, we'll start searing the pork, I think, and get it in the oven roasting. And then we'll get the rice going. So for the pork, we'll just put a little bit of lard into the pan. And when we're searing, it's important that the heat is pretty high. I usually go like medium high, not too, too high. This fat is gonna like make the texture of the sauce really nice too. I didn't think of that. Okay, why am I seeing like there's literally an ad popping up almost like every two minutes? These are not the settings that I have for my channel. So what is going on here? Is Twitch just like doing whatever they want? Cookie, I'm telling you right now. So there's a reason, like I put on my OBS the alert of when an ad pops up and it's like been every two minutes. I think I have like four minutes max of ads per hour. But I think I might just like have to turn it off because it's so distracting to me. Okay, so those of you that usually are here and saying that my mic goes really weird when we're cooking, I'm gonna try to not cook with the hood fan today. Maybe I'll set up the, the other fan just so it's pointed at the smoke detector. See if that affects the audio. Hi, Alti. Twitch is going nuts with the ads. Okay. That's what I was wondering, Michael. The fat is sizzling. No smoke detector going off today. It has been a while. How are you, Alti? Welcome in. It's literally been every two minutes, Greek. Ah! So I'm not crazy. This smells delicious. Should be almost hot. So I'm gonna put the pork this side down first. So that we can just flip it once. Is this even going to fit in here? We might have to like... Put it on an angle. <laughs> That's okay. It will also shrink as it's searing. That's a big one. <laughs> I didn't want to cut it in half though. 
I'm very particular of cutting into these mussels because I feel like you'll always just lose the juices. Mm. Okay, so while that's searing, also just got pasta grease on me. Let's get our small pot for the rice. And then I'm gonna put the cauliflower in the oven when the pork goes in. You like slow cooking your pork o? It is good like that. They make smoke alarms now that can detect the kitchen smoke and not blare the alarm. Pop this window open too so we can get proper flow here. Not just like being set off from the heat of the house, because that's what I feel like it is most times. It's not, it doesn't get smoky in here, it just gets really hot. Look at that color though. We'll go a little longer. I have to, okay, there's one more area which I'm working on this week on the balcony that I have to clean under the Traeger and the shot vac and stuff where the birds were trying to live. The heat is only at six out of nine. This was paprika, you guys, on that side. That's why it's that colored. It's not burn. Trying to pop this up so it can chill on this side. There you go. It was paprika. <laughs> so we did that so it would put a little bit of red color into the sauce and onto the pork. But it doesn't take much to get it seared. So you have one more side, and then we start creating the sauce. And the pork is gonna have to rest anyways when it comes out of the oven, so let's just wait on the rice. <laughs> Nike. <laughs> I don't know. It's getting pretty warm in here already. Let's go one one higher. I'm scared. Okay, so this is the last side. So it said... That is so much garlic, you guys, but we're committing. That looks so good, too. So it said fry your garlic. I'm going to add a little bit of oil because there's not much in here. Just so the garlic doesn't burn. Oh, that smell now. Just going to use this little whisk from the liquid. To kind of give it a stir and a spread out. Now everyone, the whole entire neighborhood gets to smell these smells. Okay, that looks nice and golden. You guys can see that, how it's like, I would say half of it's mostly roasted. And then from here, just turn off your pan. Look at the pork like sealed all the juices on that side. That's crazy. I'm just gonna use this to kind of deglaze where we were frying the garlic. <laughs> the pork dam. Tongs, she says one flip. So I wanted to, oh my gosh, look at that. So I wanted to flip on the paprika side first, get it coated and then flip it back over for the oven. <laughs> what the heck? Did I see someone's leaving? 
Yes, Greek. Thanks for hanging on your lunch break, dude. Okay, hopefully see you tomorrow. Love you. Take care. Okay, let's get this in. Whoa, Do I have to spread out the liquid more? I'm just looking. Make it like half and half on each side. Okay. She's going in. Put her in the middle. Rack. And then... We'll pop the cauliflower. Top. I'm gonna set a 10 minute timer. And then come over here. We'll start the rice. What was in the liquid cookie? I did soy sauce, sweet soy, a half a cup of honey, and some apple cider vinegar. I basically just followed the recipe, but I added a bit of sweet soy. Okay, bye, Alti. I might still be here. So yeah, check out the recipe, guys. I'm just trying to follow that because I've never really made this before either. Okay, let's turn this on to medium heat, our little rice pot. And we'll get a scoop of the garlic butter in here. Can we come closer? It's about as close as we'll get. There's too many good smells in here. It's a problem. I put, what, two tablespoons of garlic butter and then I reserved one if we feel like we need to mix it in after it's cooked. They say, let the butter heat up and melt and then pour the rice in. And then we have chicken broth to cook the rice with. And then if you're doing stovetop rice, you always need a lid as well. Okay, put in this oil away. I'll bring back some lids to put my broth back. Hello, Relic, welcome back. Happy Friday to you too. All done work for the week. It's almost melted. My weekly chimkin broth extravaganza. Look at that, all that parsley in there. Okay, pour the rice in. We'll give it a stir. Let it cook together for a moment or two. Toast the rice, if you will. You'll hear a little sizzle. Done with work, ready for the weekend. Beautiful, dude. Anything exciting planned? It's sizzling. Let's 
So when the rice kernels turn white rather than translucent, that's how you know they're toasted. And I always find when you toast the rice like this is it becomes more fluffy in the end when you cook it. Also, a lot of people say that when you toast things, it gives it a nuttier flavor. No plans? Yeah, just the way you like it. We need that more than we think, right? Weekends to do nothing. Okay, about half of this is toasted. I'm gonna pour in the broth, but we're gonna pour a little bit under this. Because we did three quarters of a cup of rice. I'm gonna leave about half a cup here. I'm gonna crank this so it comes up to a simmer. Wash all the goodness off the spoon. And then that'll take about 15 minutes or so to cook. You toast to me? Thanks. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grab a cutting board for the pork. So you can slice it up. After it's been rested. Excuse me. We also need a slicing knife. Ready to roll in how many minutes? In three minutes, we're taking a peek in the oven, see how the pork is cooking, and have a peek at the cauliflower roasting as well. Maybe while we're waiting, I'll start pouring this honey out into jars so that I can get that container finished up. I went through like all of my jars and cups and everything yesterday and did a big downsize. So if anyone wants mason jars, come on over. I got lots of good ones. I think it'll be easier to pack the honey in like a bunch of smaller jars. This is what I'm using. This smells in this place right now. I don't even know what to say. Nice, our rice is just slowly coming up now. So then you don't put the lid on these jars right away, right? Because the honey is really hot. You don't want to create steam inside. So I'll have to then let these all cool to room temperature. This one is getting the like half liquefied sort of thing. Is that where we stop and have to put it back on the steamer? I think so. Man, that worked great though, I will say. Now that we're rolling, turn that down below medium. Okay, we got one minute on the timer, but I can't wait any longer. I need to see. <laughs> Infuse maple syrup with chilies. Call it hot syrup for chicken and waffles. 
I mean, you've all, you've seen the hot honey everywhere. Where's that hot syrup? This is insane looking, by the way. <laughs> Look at it! When the honey gets like really heated. Okay, I gotta put that down because it's hot. I'm poking the pork and it's like pretty raw still. I don't even think it's medium rare. This should only be the half point anyways. Halfway cooking. Yeah, red syrup. You are the hot syrup. <laughs> So I'm going to say, I'm going to go seven more minutes rather than 10. Give us like a three minute leeway. Just because I find that second half of cooking usually goes quicker than the first half in the oven. What are you choosing for your first thing to smoke, Relic? Sam said he's been wanting to do a brisket lately. Hi, Mary. Good to see you. <laughs> Sam almost also got mad at me the other day. Well, not like actually mad, but I was like, I don't think we can use like the extra large big green egg on the balcony without people calling the fire department on us. I was like, you can only use the small one. So that we don't get in trouble, right? Because we'll get kicked out of the building, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> He's like, but if I can't use my XL, I might as well just sell it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's taking it a little too far there, bud. <laughs> like one extreme to the other. Cause like the Traeger is good, but it's not the same. He's like, if I have to put the egg in storage, I might as well just sell it. <laughs> big boys and their big toys. I know, right? The, the stresses of them. I'm like, I think that would be a bad choice to sell the egg now and then try and like rebuy one later in life. Probably gonna cost you double the amount of money. Right, Mary? I was like, are you feeling okay, sir? This is not allowed. Rice is looking good. Don't sell the egg. We won't. Don't worry. He's just upset that we can't really, like, use it as much as we would. But that was our choice to come live here, right? <laughs> okay. Grabbing a plate out. Whenever I eat rice, I feel like it can be plated in a bowl, but it doesn't have to be. Like rice is awesome to eat in a bowl for like ease of eating it, I guess. But I think we're gonna choose this rimmed plate today just cause we're slicing the pork and we have a sauce. We will someday. That's right, Mary. Eventually we'll have space for that egg. I ain't worried. What is my phone at here? I see that my battery pack died. We're running it risky on this one. Okay. We're laughing guys. We're just waiting on things to cook. This is my kind of meal. If you want during this time, always good to load up the dishwasher or even unload it and get it prepped for cleaning up after. A saying in the restaurants is if you have time to lean, you got time to clean. And that's also why I'll set timers. Like I only have three minutes to wait. That's not that long if you think about it. So it doesn't make sense to really start anything serious right now. Mmm. -hmm. See the rice cooking up, guys? 
actually looking so good. It looks like we won't need that extra broth either. So that's awesome. We had the awesome back deck smoker set up, not possible anymore. Well, we live in an apartment, right? And I see some balconies have a propane barbecue on them. <laughs> From past experiences using a big green egg on an apartment balcony, you'll get the fire department called on you. So we still have everything set up on the balcony. It's just whether we want to use it or not and risk that, right? Hi, Frank. Welcome in. Frank, I will tell you this. So I'm not using the hood fan today to see if that makes a difference for the sound, the audio on the stream while we're cooking. But yeah, don't worry, guys. We still have all the smokers. It's just very risky to do a big fire. Like I said, we could probably just grill with the eggs, but when you start a fire that's gonna be cooking something for like up to 20 hours, let's say, it is a big fire and it's a lot of smoke that you put into the air. Whereas like when you're grilling, it's pretty quick when you're cooking and hot, whereas you're not gonna get as much smoke rather than having the lower temp. Things we've learned. I mean, the firefighters weren't mad when they came over the one time. They asked when the pulled pork would be ready, but it's dealing with the building afterwards. Is we would have got a fine if we used the eggs. <laughs> Just for other people that possibly could have something similar to an egg and live in an apartment. I'm just checking back here because I can see all of our little fluffy air holes and it looks like it is almost done there. I'll pop the lid on and go a little bit lower temp. <laughs> Straight up. Because someone in the building actually pulled the fire alarm the one time. So we are all surrounded by three fire trucks. They shut down all of Olympic Village in Vancouver. I felt so bad. So I lean over the balcony. I was like, you guys, are you coming for us? They're like, yep. I was like, oh shit, Sam, it actually is for real. Cause I always used to joke, right? Is haha, they called the fire department on you, sucka. <laughs> so we had like, I think five firefighters come in the unit. The smoke detector wasn't even going off, right? So they're like, what the heck? Like there's not even smoke in here. What is going on? And we're like, yeah, we're just, cooking a pork shoulder for lunch. And all they said, they're like, well, when's it gonna be ready? <laughs> and that was it. And then they left. So like the firefighters were super chill. It's just the afterwards part. <laughs> Actually, I think I wanna stir this whole thing up get it kind of recoated in the broth. And then that was our seven minute timer as well. So I'm just gonna turn off this pot cause it looks so yummy and like glazed and just keep it warm on there cause there is a bit of liquid. We're gonna temp the pork together over here. <coughs> And then the cauliflower is looking pretty dang good. Holy, this sauce. This sauce looks crazy, you guys. It's like kind of terrifying as well, so be careful, cause look. That's just the honey, right? Caramelizing. I would say, Daph, like I'm pretty sure, that's actually, feels like it's pretty much good. I think some trees actually have buds on them here already. So I'm gonna go for more of like a medium cook on this. 
The center is 125. Medium is around like 135, 140. Let's do a couple more moments. And I'm also looking at the sauce consistency. If it's too reduced, you can always add a bit of water, which I think we are going to do because you don't want it to burn. We didn't come this far to only go this far. Or actually, hello, instead of water, just add some broth. Just since it's gonna cook a couple more moments. Give it a little zhuzh. That more in the center. And then I'm gonna set five more minutes. The cauliflowers, though. I'm just gonna rinse my hands. You can't go less than 145 because the waifu. So many of us were raised to be like scared of medium pork, right? Where's my five minuter? How's this? Nice. We got some color and it's not mushy. That's exactly what we want. I'm just gonna leave that out of the oven for five moments, but like leave it over there where it's gonna stay warm. And then we'll pop it back in when the pork comes out to rest, just so it can also rewarm. Nice. Thank you, my guy. And welcome back to the kitchen crew. It's great to have you relic subscribing at tier one. If she sees any shade of pink, she'll freak out. <laughs> That's why I said it's like how we're raised. Most of us, we can't even help that. Okay, so the pork will come out of the pan and just onto the cutting board to rest. And yeah, the sauce will just pour out of the pan onto the plate and be good to go there. Whoa. So the rice is done. We got the garnishes ready. I want to see actually how this tastes since we have time. It's kind of bland. It's kind of bland, guys. I'm going to add a little bit more of this broth. Definitely let's finish with this scoop of the garlic butter. Then let's add some seasoning while we're waiting. Because we didn't add any seasoning earlier when it cooked. Now we can stir that in with a little bit more of this. So I will say like a cooked garlic butter versus a fresh garlic butter, you're gonna get way more flavor having it fresh. So that's why I saved this little bit to mix in at the end. My allergies are bugging me a little bit again. The snow mold, because there's no snow anywhere, so everything's just like gross and dusty. Okay, small taste of that now. It doesn't look like nearly enough garlic butter. We put two tablespoons in to cook with it. Ooh. 
way better. You know, the first bite was so lackluster. <laughs> okay, one moment. I'm just gonna blow my nose really quick. One sec. It's me. We have the truck up and functional. No, it's all good, guy. Never, never apologize for asking questions, especially since you haven't been here a while. It is not functional. I mean, yes, it runs. <laughs> the truck runs and everything like that. I actually went and checked on it this week because I headed out to the storage locker. And one thing I have been like toying with lately is actually like using that truck as more of an investment for a down payment on something that's going to be larger for us. Because I am pretty sure I can make at least 10,000 extra than what we bought it for because inflation. A food bus? Yeah, something more like that. We have more room. Where did I put my thermometer? There it is. Think more like a semi-truck chassis is what Sam wants to do. Okay, so see how this even... First, you can see the juices coming out. That always looks kind of gross and weird. But anyways, with me poking it, it's like way less... It has way less give. So let's just take the reading in a little bit of a different area. Yeah, so see, I said 135 to 140 for more of a medium. If you're worried, just kind of slowly pull it out. Think what? Pop it in there for two more moments, then just turn off the oven. Yeah, food bus. Because the one thing on the truck that we bought, and like we weren't, I don't think, really thinking at the time, is the roof on its fiberglass, but the rest of the box is metal. Like as far as structure goes, a fiberglass roof is not the best. Oh yeah, we've looked at buses. Sam wants the semi chassis because he's, that's what he drives now. And he's also been learning on like how to fix it when he's at work. As well, when you get into those trucks, I mean, think about how many semis are on the road, right? There's just so many more parts available than something that is already 20 years old. So stay tuned. I mean, the, if I can get a job, this is gonna come together so much sooner. Hopefully in the next three weeks, I might have one. You always turn off the oven four to five minutes before the end of cooking, save the planet and the electric bill. It's true. I mean, that was our two minutes. Turn that baby off. I'm gonna let it sit in there for two minutes before we take it out to rest. So in the meantime, we can get ready for plating and then the last thing we'll do is just slice the pork and pop it on the plate and take our photo. Done with this. 
camera set up over there. Two, two. Okay, our race. So this is our garlic butter rice. It looks not as white because we cooked it with some chicken stock, not broth. There was bones involved. And then just to garnish on the plate, we're gonna do some sliced green onions and then crispy garlic chips. And that is from the recipe. And then I have some little bit of chopped parsley here from last week's stream to sprinkle over the cauliflower. Would you have a semi towing around the portable restaurant? What is this thing called? I need to write it in the chat so that you can look it up. Look up. This is what Sam's looking at. Whether it's an old one or a new one. <laughs> it is actually insane though, I will say. <laughs> like it makes me laugh just thinking about it. <laughs> but also really happy. Because we've kind of come to the terms with the fact that like we don't want to buy a house that's built by someone else. I just want to show you guys this on this side. And then uh, we don't like living in one place either for a long period of time. So having a house on wheels just makes the most sense for us, right? And now with Samo's job, like we can live anywhere and they'll fly him to work for free. I'm just gonna give the pork one little swipe in the sauce before we set it on the board to rest. Holy. Okay, and then lastly, our re warmed cauliflower okay so let's get our rice on there get this set up that's interesting looking isn't it so yeah some of those or like all of those you have the option to buy a garage trailer on the back there's actually one kind of local here. It's more Southern Alberta, an older one. And they're selling it with the trailer. But Sam's like, I don't think I can like drive that with the trailer yet. But eventually. That way, if we do find a property, because we don't want to buy a property with a house on it, maybe a shop, but not necessarily a, a built house on it. Just live in that while we get the homestead going. I don't know, man. Interest rates are so fajorked in Canada that like I'm not committing to a mortgage on a house. It's just not possible. This is looking so good already. It looked like kind of bland earlier. But now that we garnished it.
get our cauliflowers on. Turmeric, lime. We did some coriander as well as a bit of cumin. That looks good. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit of this parsley on the cauliflower. You don't need it, but if you have it. Finding free parking for the thing can't be easy. No, but we know a lot of people <laughs> with like land that we could go park it on. As well, like it's not the best for parking, but like any Walmart or Cracker Barrel or anything like that, you're allowed to park for free if we are like on a road trip. I even said to Sam, like if that's what we end up buying first, like I wouldn't even care if I paid monthly to like live in a RV park set up. Because the RV parks around here are actually really nice. There's one that has a spring-fed lake to swim in. It's like, what the heck? I was like, why am I living in an apartment? <laughs> Slightly brown cauliflower is so tasty. Yes, right? Mmm. Okay. Gotta move this over. Just pop it up a bit looks so dark. Turn up the light. That glaze though. If I turn it this way, you can see it a bit more. Okay, so we always slice against the grain, which for this muscle cut is really simple. You just slice across this way. You never slice this way. looks a little dry for my liking on the end, but you'll usually get that, especially because we did cook it at a higher temp. But then look at this. Like to me, this is how I like to eat pork, you guys. Oh, I can't even show you there. It was just too hot for me to hold. Like that though, look at the juice is dripping. To me, that's perfect. I got all messy. But that's the thing, is you could cook this whole tenderloin. If you have people that like the well done, give them the ends. If you like people or have people that like it a little bit more medium, give them the center cut. You can still please everyone. And cook it perfectly. The hood fan isn't on, but I have a fan here. Beside me, Frank. No, you got an $80 parking ticket the other day? That's messed up. This little nug at the end is the best. Okay. Do this without creating too much crazy mess. I'm gonna go like right from the center just for the photo. I think these four chunks looks awesome. And we're gonna fan it out a little bit. And then we can pour our sauce over. Maybe we need one more behind. We're always taught like uneven numbers for plating in culinary school. The question with this honey garlic sauce, whenever you make it from scratch, is like, is it still liquefied now that it's sat a little bit? <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do is pour the pork juices into it to kind of give it a little rewarm. There. That on there. Is this really hot still? Yes, it is. 
And we just need a spoon to scoop. Ooh, it is liquid still. All of the caramelized garlic in there. Holy, it's so dark you can't even see it, you guys. Okay, ready? I want to still see some of the pork. That's it. That's the dish. It's dark, right? Homemade HG. <laughs> Caretaker, thank you very much. That is like very nice of you to say. And yeah, it didn't take long to cook. What, two and a half hours? I mean, by the time we plated, maybe a little bit over that. But a lot of times lately, it doesn't matter what we've been cooking. Everything's just been taking two and a half hours. Unless I like throw in a dessert, right? Yeah, the pork got a little dry from my liking just on the outside edges. And that's why, yeah, you can cook it a little bit slower and you won't get that bit of grayness. It's still gonna be yummy though, right? And yeah, the cauliflower looks all right. Like I said, I didn't link a recipe for that. I just kind of made that one up today. But if it's really nummy, I'll type it up. I think we'll use a little knife to cut that pork into a smaller piece. That's what I'm starting with. Nom. Mm. I didn't know honey garlic sauce was that good when you make it. You know when it just tastes like real and not fake? You got the honey, all the garlicky bits. Holy, just soaked up all this sauce. I love the acidic part of the honey garlic sauce because so many times like the store-bought one, it's just overly sweet and that just coats your palate. This one is not too sweet where like I can still taste the pork meat through the sauce or like with it. Really, really good. Hmm. Interesting, Frank. It would probably work. That's true, caretaker, right? Even if it says it's honey garlic, most of the time the first ingredient is still sugar. So I thought the honey garlic sauce would be like so amazing to eat with this rice today. Let's see. Because the whole bottom layer of rice has like absorbed the sauce. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> this is one of the better things I've made and eaten in a while. I think I said that last week too, though. Maybe it's just really satisfying cooking for yourself. And like, it's even more satisfying when you share it with people. Mm. That cauliflower is great. A little bit of crunch still, you guys can hear that. 
the turmeric flavor is really good with the coriander and cumin. Definitely a palate cleanser of sorts. Sound issues are prominent at the moment. Okay, let's see this. Because we're done cooking. Turn off that fan. Oh, I bet, caretaker. Yeah, being diabetic led you to read more labels and the amount of sugar in items. It's mind-blowing. It totally is. Mm. I want to, like, eat all this and then go for a nap. Why do I feel like that? Hell, where have you been all day? Thank you, Michael. I love your screenshots and I will say because Sam hasn't been around to like be here during stream, he's also really appreciating them. You were around a little on TV. My guy. <laughs> so yeah, this was also kind of a budget meal, right? The pork tenderloin was $5 from this store. The cauliflower was $2.49. And our little bit of rice and stuff that we made, that's like $10 to feed at least two people. <laughs> yeah, I'll have good dreams. Should probably go for a walk first though. are we gonna raid? My hair's crazy. Mmm. Banana bread? A moogle cake? Guys, we wanna go see cake made? Or banana breads? I don't know what to choose. <sighs> that was so good. The cake, cake. Thank you for saying that, Lady Bonfire. We're gonna go see Cat of Whimsy then. Now you're thinking it's the mic that's bad or too sensitive. You know what? I did have my little fluffer on the mic and then once upon a time i took it off but look it lives here on my stream cart frank i'm gonna pop it there i'm gonna put that baby on this little guy for tomorrow and see how that works we're gonna get this sorted excuse me bells for approval for the chef before we go sorry what type of cake it says moogle cake from Final Fantasy, I think. I know that Cat of Whimsy, formerly Cosmicat, she bakes some insane like video game themed cakes. She's also Canadian. She has an awesome husband as well that streams guitar playing. We created it. Woohoo! Thank you very much, Kimmers, for your resub today. We will be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific, same with Sunday. Tomorrow, we got some more yummy things going down. If you guys like chowder, that's what we're going to be making. One of my favorite, I would say, variations of a chowder. It's called a Pacific Rim Chowder. The recipe has been posted in Discord many years ago from one of my favorite restaurants. And then we're also going to bake some cookies tomorrow and mill some grains so that we can make a sourdough starter. Lots of fun. 
So hope to see you then. Take care wherever you are in the world today. And I want to say thanks to Cookie for the 57 months today. Relic, welcome back to the kitchen crew and welcome in our new follows. Okay, friends, that's all I got. If you need me at all, you know where to find me on my socials. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Stay safe. Love ya. Bye.